Hi guys. Uh, today, well, first of all, I'm trying to distract you with the Christmas tree behind me because my hair is still wet and all kind of grungy looking today. But, um, you know, I had to do this video. I don't have a lot of time. I'm pretty busy lately. But I wanted to talk to you about something. And this is, I had this note to do this video for a few days. I got to do it before I lose my train of thought. So I want to talk to you today about book covers why it's important to have a very sharp eye-catching book cover you have to draw attention uh, my latest book cover uh, for the devil and his legacy I wish I had it right now to show you because I well it hasn't arrived yet but I would because it's very eye-catching there's a lion he's very fiery there's a lot of uh, the colors are beautiful um, the people at my publisher who put these covers together did just an amazing job, amazing job. And um, they always do. They always do. I like all my covers. I have some I like better. That's one of them. I have to admit, it's a little bit different from all my other covers, and I kind of contemplated if I should kind of go that route with an animal in the front, but it kind of makes sense because all my titles have an animal or a devil in the title, so it kind of brings things full circle. But anyway, so back to what I was originally going to talk to you, the broad subject of covers, not just a specific cover. I um, want to talk about why a nice, sharp, cool, eye-catching, whatever you want to call it, cover is important. Now, it's important, obviously, because it catches attention. That's what you want to do. Um, people have a short attention span these days. I'm sure you probably noticed that. So it's even more important than ever before. But what do you need in the cover? What's important? Well, first of all, you need to really kind of create an image of what your book is about. Give an impression. So a lot of my book covers, for example, the last few have a male character using a suit and tie, looking very distinguished, that sort of thing. That represents my characters well. They don't look like, even though they're criminals, they don't look like what you see on television as criminals. <laughs> Although, um, that's changed over the years. When I was growing up, a criminal looked like a bum, basically. Nowadays, criminals come in all shapes and sizes, as they do in real life, if you haven't noticed. Um, so that's important. I, that's why I often have my... my um, cover image with some a man with a suit so just to show there's that distinguished sort of power behind um, the book and you know it's really it should uh, because people have made suggestions before and I've thought of different things and when I was trying to come up with covers for various books and it's just you kind of have to go with your instincts and you can't really go just with it has to be something that grabs you and, and just it grabs your attention and there's just something feels right about it but you have to consider your audience as well so my characters it depends on the book of course but my last few books I try to keep it that the covers are appealing to male and female whereas maybe some of my earlier books with a female on the cover might kind of draw more attention to a female reader I really wanted to consider that when I was creating, I shouldn't say creating the covers, I don't make the covers, but cons when I'm considering the image I would like on the cover, maybe that's the best way to explain it. Um, and just sort of a sense, I mean, you know, my books now are a lot of suspense, so I kind of want to have that, and dark, dark, so there has to be sort of a dark element to it, a sort of a suspense vibe. You know, um, I always say I hate the covers that are cartoony looking. I call them cartoony looking. I know that's not the proper way to put it, but you see a lot of, especially books for women. I don't know if any male book really has this where it's a picture and it looks kind of like somebody drew the picture and it's like a girl looking cute and stuff. And I, I, it's just... I don't know. I don't like those kind of thing, those kind of covers to me. Though. But that, but they suit those books. They suit those books because they usually have, um, um, they're usually some comedy involved, so it it works. That would be a good example of 
picking the proper book cover. That works for them. That totally works. They wouldn't want to have a very serious looking character on the cover like some of my books because that wouldn't work for them. Now, I, I thought I'd bring one of my books here to show you in this video. This is my favorite book cover, except for my new one that's about to come out. The Devil is Legacy, in case you forgot the title. Anyways, but this is one of my favorite. It was my 10th book, uh, and The Devil Will Laugh. I love this cover. I love the color. I love the image. I like what they did with the image, because I know what it looked like before they did some work on it, the people at the publisher. I love the guy on it. It's very sexy, very serious. It suits the character, which is George Hernandez. And when I look at that, I'm like, yeah, that's probably kind of what he looks like. I have sort of different ideas, but uh, yeah, definitely very sinister. And so that was important. And that makes sense. It fits with my book. You know, um, I have a picture. Okay, so the book's called The Devil. And the Devil Will Laugh. Oh my God, I can't remember my freaking titles anymore and the devil will laugh well if I had a cartoony devil on the front laughing it would just look ridiculous um it, for me it wouldn't fit in with my books it wouldn't fit in with that book it wouldn't fit in with my genre it wouldn't fit in with anything so again you have to pick your covers very carefully and if you don't believe me and you're not a book reader don't love books maybe I don't know why you're watching this but you might be for whatever reason uh, even if you see like movie posters, the ones that catch your attention, you probably are going to look a little bit more into. You're probably going to check out the trailer. You might even read about it. Uh, you might just go right to the movie without even investigating. It's important. It's important to kind of, and it sets the image. It's and it, it shouldn't be gimmicky and it shouldn't be over the top marketing. I see that a lot, especially when you see, um, well, it's none of my business, but yeah, yeah, I won't get into that. I, you know, I'll just piss off somebody, but, <laughs> um, you know, I, like, yeah, I'm, I, it depends on the kind of book you want and, and your audience and what you think will speak to your audience, what you feel represents you as a writer well, these kind of covers represent me well. Again, if I had a picture of a laughing, cartoonish-looking devil in the front, it wouldn't represent me well at all. But, you know, what about you? Like, I'm always curious how many people look at the cover and decide whether or not they're going to read the book without even investigating. Is that something that people really look at? Is that, Or is that a myth? Maybe I think that that's the case, and it's not. I personally don't look at covers, but I read a lot of nonfiction. So I go by what the subject matter is. Who wrote the book? Why they are sort of an authority on it? How they write it? Um, you know, so it's a little bit different with fiction. I tend to, again, it seems to be the subject matters. What kind of intrigues me a little more than I don't really overthink a cover, but I think a lot of people do. So I don't know. What do you think? Anyways, guys, uh, would you mind liking this video, maybe subscribing, hit the bell, get them sent to your email, um, share. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it, and uh, enjoy my Christmas tree. It's not fully decorated, but there's some pretty lights. Have a great day, guys.